sort of broken up in a, in a way where I'm with my mother, you know, learning how to um, paint, you know, and draw in uh, Palos Verdes, you know, so you have all this lovely, you know, you know the trees and cliffs and the seascape and everything, you know, so uh, that, that plain air school, you know, of watercolor, she was just in that and she was a part of a society there and I would just go along with her at, you know, at um, 11 and uh, to like 14 years old. So, and um, and she would take me to museums. I would go down to the county museum and you know see all this stuff with her, and she'd explain it. Go to Barnstall. So um, so in high school, being dyslexic, uh, and they didn't even know what that was at that time. They gave me two classes of art because I could actually type 35 minutes or 35 words, you know, per uh, minute. So that got me out of that class. So <coughs> it was really quite amazing to be able to, to um, in the day, be able to concentrate, you know, for like two hours, you know, in the schedule. working at Capitol Records, working on Beatle projects or something like that. But this then is I would, while you were... Yeah, there, right? so I'd go off to the establishment, you know, uh, wearing a suit, mm -hmm. and then I'd come back to the underground, you know, and have all my art school friends and have entirely different projects going. So that, that the underground became more of, of a place where I was entangled, you know, in, in all these efforts to do these incredible things, you know. And then I would have to go to the office and there's all these board corporate guys passing papers around, you know, and, and uh, so I decided to get rid of that, you know. So at the end of Pinnacle, I still had the relationships with Capital, and, uh, and they had me on a leave of absence, you know, they just loved what I did. Uh, so I went to London, and uh, went to Seville Road, and spent time there, about six months or so, in all these um, hash dens, and movies, uh, campuses, and the Royal College of the Arts and their, t their BBC, you know, it was fun and I was like a, almost like a rock star from LA, you know, having this, um, having this known um, place called Pinnacle where I ordered bands from, uh, from London on the tours, you know, so they knew what I had done, sort of. Relationship with Robert Frank. Yeah. So uh, in the, in the school or at Chenard or at Cal Arts, you know, uh, I ran into a, a a student who then, you know, said you have to meet uh, Ralph Gibson. I said, oh well, let's try that. You know, so I meet this guy and he has these great surreal kind of photos. You know, and and you you know, when you're in school and you're going through the art history classes or even photographic classes about the history of photography, you know, uh, if someone comes along in front of you with something that relates to it, you go, oh my god, look at that, this guy's doing this, you know. So then he was always paying homage to uh, Robert Frank. So, um, so he introduces me to Robert Frank and I sort of see this Swiss guy who became a beatnik, you know, and, uh, and, but then he went to a museum, you know, or from the Bowery where he uh, lived with um, Ginsburg, 
and uh, de Kooning, he, he would go uptown to these parties, and so he got to meet um, Peggy Guggenheim, and she gave him $50,000 in a car, and he went across the country and, and uh, made this uh, book called The Americans. And, and, and at that time, in 68, you're looking at this book that's almost, what, 10, 12 years old from the 50s. Mm -hmm. You know, so that was like vintage, you know. And then through Ralph, he, uh, Ralph was trying to help him out and, um, you know, get him shows and all that. So by the time it comes around uh, one day and I've done these album covers and I have a reputation and, uh, and, and Norman Seif calls me and he says, here, we're going to go up to this Bel Air mansion and we're going to see uh, uh, Marshall Chest and Mick Jagger. I said, oh, Bill, good, let's do that, you know. So we arrive at this palatial Bel Air mansion that looks like a place from, um, you know, Spain or something like that. Just a gorgeous thing, the French countryside. And um, so within that, I, you know, there's the introduction, uh, you know, to Jagger and, and uh, I, they've all been sort of, they know I'm coming, you know, because I, um, his press office um, is a girlfriend of mine from London that knew me, you know, so it was just sort of like, oh, okay. <laughs> So I was all of a sudden in the family, you know, I was a rolling stone, you know, that was good. So within that, I was able to um, sit with Jagger, you know, and uh, talk with him a little bit and, and showing my work to he and Keith and in this sort of living room. And, uh, and Jagger and I are sitting on a um, little ottoman. And so it's sort of like we're butt to butt, you know, in this room, you know, and all these people are kind of and in the room comes Robert Frank, you know, and I look up and I say, John, I know him, yeah. And so I say to Jagger in his ear, I say, <clears throat> he'd be great for the cover. <laughs> so the interesting part of what happens there is that Jagger gets up and he walks over and uh, to uh, Frank, and Frank is there really for a documentary uh, with, the, uh, with Seymour, his assistant, you know, they're going to do Cocksucker Blues, you know. But this a moment comes, you know? And so from there, um, Jagger went down to Main Street, you know, and they did, did uh, a, a series of uh, photo strips, you know, that, that um, Robert Frank was, that, that he put together. So he would take eight millimeter movies and, and blow them up and make prints and then cut them all up. So um, this stuff arrives, you know, at this meeting, you know, in the mansion on this big table, and there's, uh, Keith, you know, sort of with these mirrored glasses, you can't see into his eyes, and he's sort of wavering, you know, on this table, you know, and, and then Jagger tells me to sit down right next to him, and then there's Marshall Chess on the other side, and then they start handing me these pieces, you know, that Robert Frank has done, and Jagger's explaining, you know, this is the bag, and this is that, and this is the cover, and that's the back, and all that, and so I took those elements home, and uh, made a you know a cover out of them, much like an art print, you know. Rather than making it formal, I made it informal, like it was a beatnik package, you know. And uh, at the actual meeting and everything, uh, Norman Seif has, has been in a session with the Stones, and and has his pictures there, you know. And he sort of all of a sudden left out, you know. And Keith is across the table, and he says, "Oh, let's make a." postcard thing that folds out and he falls on the ground <laughs> just totally loaded and so Norman um, you know is, uh, is excited and and, and uh, Marshall Chess says oh, okay we'll do that you know so that's how the postcards get into the uh, package packages normally were like 90 cents and this one cost a uh, dollar 35 and then when it came out, everyone hated it, you know? And the most interesting part of the record business is that you are no more than your latest hit for like eight days. Right. As Billboard, you know, dissolves all your credibility by creating another, um, you know, pop culture hit, number one. Yeah. So what I noticed about the photographs and the photo show, you know, is they're they're very emotional, you know. I'm 
there's like compassion. You, you know, you, you're, you're behind this camera, this machine, you know, but you're trying to translate, you know, through that a, a, a feeling, you know, a place in time and an emotion and all that. And that's what's sort of lost in a lot of work today. Really what this show is about is that there's some remaining things that were that I still had, but then I offered new things to that. And that built up like a, a 20 photographs, a collection, you know, of these negatives that will, you know, be a book on all that. Um, the amazing part of all that is, is then I was buying these Leicas, you know, and so by the time we get to like 1970, 1971, you know, then this this beautiful M5 comes along with a, a, a light meter, so you don't have to have a hand hold one, you know, you can just put that on top and you can look through it and you were able to take these pictures. So the one of Griffin is like, that's the first of that, you know, series of photographs. And then from there, you know, I, I, every year I would uh, take more here and there, and I travel, and and, uh, and between the album covers and and posters and publications, and and uh, going to all these places across the world, you know, as a as a graphic designer uh, with a camera, that was the way it was, you know. Wanda Turner with her bodyguard. Another 